What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we got to talk about what happened on this episode of Monday Night Raw. They did a really good job of building up for Bad Blood next month. I'm really excited to see how things are going to play out. I'm just ready to fast forward through September so we can get to October and check out Bad Blood because they did a great job of building up matches and building up that card. So, we got to talk about the recent news that monday night raw will be going back to two hours this is not a drill this is real life they announced it on monday night raw and they announced it on twitter that wwe will be going back to two hours um on the usa network from 8 p.m eastern standard time to 10 p.m eastern standard time starting on monday october 7th and through the rest of 2024 culminating with the usa network finale on monday night on monday december 30th so we'll be going back to a two hour raw it's been so long since we've had a two hour raw i've seen some people say that they're excited to for the show to be a little uh, you know one hour shorter and then i've seen some people that aren't aren't a big fan of it so um i want to kind of get y'all opinion y'all can comment down below how do y'all feel about monday night raw going back to a two-hour show me personally i don't have a problem with it i think the three-hour format uh, even though we was able to get more people and more storylines and more wrestlers involved, a lot of times that would be fillers and rematches that we've already seen anyway, just to fill out the show. I think a shorter, concise show with a clear direction of what needs to be on there and what doesn't is the best way to go, the better way to go, in my opinion. So they'll have to be better on their time management for sure to get whatever they're trying to get on the show on the show so uh yeah y'all let me know how y'all feel about that me personally i'm glad that it's going back to the two hour show but i can understand why people feel like the three hour format is needed so y'all let me know how y'all feel about that so that was one of the big shocking news at the beginning of the show so we got to talk about finn balor coming out there <clears throat> and essentially he's talking about the reasons why him and damian priest are not cool and he feels that Damian Priest turned his back on Judgment Day. He he was saying that this is my brother, I had his back and when I was champion, uh when I was going for championship gold, you had the money in the bank briefcase. You you really didn't want me to have championship gold. I always had your back. This is the reason why this has happened to you. It we didn't screw you over you screwed us over. You never really cared about us. So he's like, you know what? Get your ass out here. I got something I got to say to your face. So Damian Priest comes out there. He's walking with a purpose, picks up the mic. He's like, hey, say what you got to say. Cool. Once you're done saying what you got to say, I'm going to beat your ass. So what you got to say? <laughs> so he comes out there and he said, you know what? I just want you to know that, you know, at Bad Blood, I want to have a match with you one-on-one. -on -one. So Damon Priest was like, what? You you, you want to have a match with me? That's why you called me out to have a match with me? Fine. I accept. Cool. Now let me beat your ass. <laughs> See, like, all right. that's You just want to have a match with me at Bad Blood? Cool. All right. I'm going to beat your ass. Let's get it going. He's like, no, 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 no. It ain't going to go down like that. No, 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 no. If anything, you know how the judgment day get down you know you know how we get down he's like fool i made the blueprint of how the judgment day moves so of course other people from the judgment day start attacking one by one he starts packing them up but the numbers game gets the best of him of course and then that's when uh rhea ripley music hits she's still on crutches she comes down there to try to assist and dominic's trying to stop but that's when Liv morgan comes out of nowhere chop blocked her on her bad knee and um this is right actually actually dominic does get hit with the crutch a few times and then that's when Liv comes in and stops um she since she essentially is able to stop rhea ripley because she hits um uh, rhea does hit live with the crutch and is able to you know get some offense with it but ultimately once again rhea has the bad knee she goes for the knee so now rhea's incapacitated now at this point they're beating the hell 
out of fucking Damian Priest. There's nothing he can do. Liv, uh, Rhea gets into the ring. Then Liv starts hitting her over and over and over in her bad leg with the with the damn um, uh, crutch. So at this point, now Liv is going crazy with the crutches. Just over and over beating them down. And you see Damian pretty much sacrifices himself. He puts his body over Rhea and... That don't mean shit. They still hitting the Damian Priest over and over and over with the crutch. And then Dominic gets the crutches and starts beating. They're holding Damian, you know, like he can't move. So he's, you know, he's his chest is like, you know, he's kind of extended out. They have his hands and his feet kind of held in place. So he's just constantly hitting him with the um with the crutches over and over and over and over and over. I also forgot to mention that Jay Uso did come out there with a steel chair to help out um, Rhea Ripley and uh, Damian Priest, even though they had already been packed up. They were getting beat over and over and over with the crutches. So he did take his sweet little time. He could have came out there and helped them a little bit sooner, but that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to put that in this video because I definitely forgot to mention that. All right, back to the video. And they look tall and dominant. They took down the Terra Twins once again. They savagely beat them up. So I can't wait to see how things are going to play out at Bad Blood. I know it's going to be fun. I cannot wait. So we also got to talk about a really good segment with uh, Bret Hart coming out there. They were in Calgary uh, tonight. Bret Hart comes out there. Huge ovation. Crowd loves him. Some Bret. And... Then Gunther comes out. Gunther comes out and you know he's about to say something smug, something disrespectful. So Gunther comes out there. He's like, yeah, man, you know, you're you're everybody used to watch you as a kid. We all used to look up to you as a kid, man. Like you, you, you was the best to, you know, ever do it. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm the best to ever do it. And this was a really good. A really good line. Great heel heat from Gunther. He was like, you know what? You're my second favorite. Second favorite. You want to know who my favorite wrestler is? At first, I thought he was going to talk about it was going to be HBK or something like that. But no, he went even lower. He said, you know my favorite wrestler is? My favorite wrestler is Bill Goldberg. The crowd boos this man out of the building, he's smug, he's smiling, it was so damn, that that was so good, that was some good heel, he said, my favorite wrestler is Bill fucking Goldberg, so at that point, Sammy comes out there, he said, I've had enough, you ain't about to disrespect this man, and you ain't about to disrespect him here, like, nah, we, we, we not about to do that, mm-mm, and then Gunther's like, hey, look, I get it. That's, you know, that's your guy. That's your idol. But, I mean, he don't even compare to me. And you don't even compare to him. So, like, what are we talking about? So, Sammy's like, all right, this is, you You talking big talk from a guy that doesn't want to face me. You ran last week. Now you don't want to face me when I was trying to uh, get an opportunity for that uh, World Heavyweight Championship. So, what's up, Gunther? Are you scared? Is that what it is? I thought you were a fighting champion. I thought you were not scared of nobody. How about we make this match official? Me versus you for that World Heavyweight Championship. Me versus Gunther, part two. Let's go. It's really more than part two, but you know. Let's go. And Gunther was like, he was thinking about it. And then he was like, nah, I ain't doing that shit. You a bum. <laughs> Basically, I'm not about to face you. You a damn bum. I don't, I don't give a damn. So he he essentially gets out the ring, and then that's when uh uh Bret Hart's like, bro, you're you're a, you're, a, you're a coward, you're a spineless, gutless coward. That's what you are. And Gunther didn't like that. He start taking off his jacket like he was about to go in there and back up uh Bret Hart. But then Sammy is like, what you gonna do? Nah 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 nah. You wanna get in there with him? You gotta go through me. So what's up? Make your move. What's up? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? 
Gunther to try to go in for the swing, and Sammy said, fuck you, and started packing up my boy Gunther, throwing him to the ring post, throwing him to the barricade. They had to get officials out there. You know I love me a good crash out on Monday Night Raw. He started giving him the beats, and Gunther had to scurry away to the back. I love that. It made sense Sammy would come out there to defend his idol in Bret Hart. Really cool moment. Great heel heat from Gunther saying that, and Goldberg's his favorite wrestler. Perfect. Now, we obviously have to talk about the Drew McIntyre segment. And this was a segment a lot of us was waiting on, and I personally was waiting to see what Drew had to say. Drew comes out there, and he's he's happy. The same way CM Punk was happy last week, he's happy. He was like, look, man, y'all can chant his name. I want you to chant his name. He led a, he led a CM Punk chant name, a, a CM Punk chant with the crowd. He was like, chant his name. I love it. You know, before I hated it, but now I love it because I know that I ended CM Punk's career. So this is just a memory to him. It's a, y'all are just remembering CM Punk. I ended him. So he's like, look, at the end of the day, CM Punk thought just because he touched four corners, he beat me in a strap match, that was done. No. No, that it, it ain't done. You think you're just going to go for the World Heavyweight Championship after you screwed me over three times in World Heavyweight Championship opportunities? No, it wasn't done. So I took matters in my own hands, and I took care of it. Now we don't have to worry about CM Punk anymore. So now it's time for me to move forward on what's best for me. Probably going for that World Heavyweight Championship. You know, everything's good on that. You're going to do what I have to do. But I, there is some... Some other business I have to take care of, and I'm afraid I got some bad news. And I was like, uh-oh. That's what Wade Barrett used to say. Uh-oh. So then he turns to Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett's on commentary. He's like, what's going on here? He's confused. He was like, hey, man, I don't have that many friends in this industry. Like, we we came to America together. We stayed together. We got arrested together. Like, you are a friend. And you have had my back this entire time with this whole CM Punk situation. But last week, you got involved. You got involved in trying to stop me from ending this man. And I'm not upset that you did it. I'm just disappointed. So then he gets out the ring. And he gets closer to him. That commentary. He's like, but the next time. You get involved in some situation like that. I'm not going to be disappointed. I'm going to be angry. And there's going to be some issues. Essentially, he's letting them know, say, you get involved next time. I'm going to hurt you. And I love what, what Wade did. Because Wade took that headset off. He said, he didn't even say, he, he didn't say nothing that we could hear. But he took that headset off and he stood up. Crowd starting to get amped. I'm like, hey, hold on. Wait, what? I, I'm doing the best. I'm looking out for you. Hey, who you talking to? Like, we ain't we ain't about to do this. And that's when you hear Adam Pierce say, enough, Drew. Enough. First, you attack CM Punk. Then you think we think it's over now. And now you're going after your best friend when you're really good friends. What is wrong with you? I need you to get your ass back into this ring because I have an important announcement to make that it involves you. Drew's like, hey, man, I'm having a man-to-man conversation with my friend. You are not my friend. You are someone that CM Punk kisses his ass to, and you're a corporate shield. So what the hell do you want? He gets in the ring. So he's like, hey, after what you did last week, uh, we all thought it was over between y'all, but after you attacked CM Punk last week, I talked to him or whatnot, and he says, He's not done with you. He's not finished with you. And uh, um, he's coming after you. Drew's like, you got to be joking. Like, what? Sure. All right. Let's play this hypothetical game. Sure. Sure. What? Y'all. Hey, guys. You asked in the crowd. Hey, guys. You you guys want to see CM Punk versus Drew one more time? Like, what are you doing? Like, like, I will destroy this man. Like. If this is what you want to do, he wants to have another one-on-one match with me, that's fine. His blood is on your hand. I'm going to destroy him. And Adam Pierce is like, look, at this point, this will be the last match. 
in this match will be it, it, it will be the final between y'all. And I will finally be able to be at peace with this whole situation because it's going on long enough. Y'all will face at bad blood. But knowing that this match will end gives me peace. And in the way he framed it and set it up, y'all match will be one-on-one inside hell in a cell. And the crowd goes crazy. And the look on Drew's face was perfect. It was a look of concern. It was a look of confusion. It was it was a look of he wasn't smiling. He wasn't cocky. He wasn't confident. He was genuinely had this look of uh oh, what have I, what, what what have I done? It was such a good look. I love that. Facial expressions are very important, especially in wrestling. And he told so many things without saying things because he wasn't smiling. He wasn't happy. He was more so like concerned that things are about to pick up. So it's official. Drew, CM Punk, last match in their feud, bad blood, hell in a cell. Need I say anything else? That's all I wanted to see. That Now we know it's happening. Let's get this shit on the road. Let's get this going. I can't wait. And CM Punk's supposed to make his return next week. Fucking can't wait. It's going to be great. So, we also got to talk about the Fatal 4-Way match for the number one contendership for the um, Intercontinental Championship. Now, I love what Braun Breaker does. He's, He's walking up to every single person that's in that match and basically letting them know, you don't stand a chance against me. I'm going to beat your ass. Even if you do win, I'm going to beat you up. You're going to lose. So I love that he did that throughout the show. So we get to the show, the main uh, the main event. Really good, solid main event. And I called this because it made sense. Bronson Reed was supposed to be in one of the qualifying matches last week, but he ended up catching COVID. So I was like, the best thing they could do is have Bronson Reed come back, attack um, Braun Strowman, in that match, it's essentially eliminating him out that match so they can continue their feud because he wasn't a part of it. And that's exactly what happened. As Braun Strowman setting up the announce table, the way they framed it up, you don't see what's behind him. But he has the announce table cleared off. And then all of a sudden, Bronson Reed jumps from the ringside um the um the area where Samantha be sitting at in the 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 timekeeper's area he jumps off this little platform on that side hits Braun Strowman with the tsunami through the announce table really 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 great spot love that spot beautiful moment bro so good and he walks away crowds chanting holy shit it was just a great moment and their feud is not done I can't wait to see what they do with them next. Bronson Reed, my boy is back. The crash out king of Monday Night Raw is back, essentially. Sorry. Can't wait to see what they do with that. So, uh, ultimately, Jay ended up getting the win, which I figured they were going to do because of how they've been setting up this Jay Uso and Braun Breaker uh, back and forth it, it only made sense and the idea that Jay has never won a singles title and they're teasing that I figured they were going to set this match up and unfortunately they didn't have enough time but Braun uh Braun Breaker was standing right behind Jay as the crowd and everyone else was celebrating that he won he was standing right behind Jay we didn't get to see that interaction because they had to go to the next show but overall Monday Night Raw was pretty solid i I gave it a seven out of ten it was a solid show i love the building up of these matches we've got a confirmed match between rhea uh, Rhea and uh liv morgan at bad blood that's a confirmed match for most likely the women's championship the women's world championship um it's not confirmed yet but they're building up to gunther versus sammy i do think that's going to be uh a match they build up to we also have a confirmed match between Drew and CM Punk in a Hell in a Cell. We also have another confirmed match in Damian Priest versus um, Damian Priest versus um, can't even think um, Finn Balor. And I don't know if they're gonna do the Intercontinental Championship match on the show or before the show. 
That's the only thing. I'm not sure if they're going to set that match up on the show or before the show. So we'll see. Because we still have a few weeks before the show. So they may set that match up on Monday Night Raw. We will see. But I love that they've been building it up. Building up these different show uh, matches leading into Bad Blood. Get you really excited. And they still have plenty of time to book even more compelling stories. Because, I mean, boys is about to crash out at Bad Blood. And I can't fucking wait. So comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite part of the show. What you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10. And also, once again, how do y'all feel about Monday Night Raw going back to two hours next month? Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.